Good morning. I've got that. I've got that stripe across my face again. Um, it's where um, you know when uh, the door was pushed in. It doesn't quite meet at the top anymore. So I've got this like streak. I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> but it is absolutely blowing a gale out there. Well, actually, it's not blowing yet. It's like gusty. So like one minute it's totally still as anything, and the next minute all the leaves are, like whoosh, straight up in the air. Um, and that's because we are a day away from supposedly, I think there's another storm coming and it's called Barra this time. Yeah, so we've got Storm Barra on the way and it's kind of the clouds are moving really, really quick, but they're quite thin. So the sun keeps coming out and then going in and out and in and out and wind and it's quite exciting. <laughs> but we've got a terrible day tomorrow because the storm's meant to hit this afternoon and then uh, with the next day is going to be dreadful. So we're up here this morning to do chopping down the raspberries. So I'm gonna go and chop them down, save the canes because I use the canes for the peas. So the peas that I sow really early this spring will have the raspberry canes as their supports. So that's really handy. I'm gonna to have to put some gloves on because I always get raspberry prickles like stuck really deep in the skin, you know, and because they're so tiny, they like heal over and then you're left with this like, yeah, like <laughs> part raspberry. <laughs> oh, I just kicked you, sorry. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. There's not going to be much sound going on outside because uh, because of the wind. Uh, the sound is going to be absolutely dreadful. So I'm just going to do a bit of miming probably if I need to say anything to you. <coughs> I'm still coughing like an idiot, not COVID, uh, but I've got I've got my whole soothers to try and stop the tickle. Uh, yeah, let's go get on with some work. Talking of COVID, I've got the COVID testing men coming again today, so I can't be up here too long. It is now quarter to 11. We're much later than we intended this morning. Uh, it's now quarter to 11 uh, and we've got to be back by 12. So I'm going to have to do like quick fire raspberry cutting round. The other thing is dad had some books delivered uh, this week, this week, yeah. So we've got two small pallets. Mum's just gone down to the bottom where I've left them at the gate. She's going to bring them up in the wheelbarrow. And that is going to be part of the new compost scheme so we're still going to be doing the same system that we do which is the three bin system but we're going to move the bins and have two extra ones on the other side of the allotment anyway i'll talk you through that when we get to it but she's gone down to get the pallets that's where she is i'm sure we'll see her arrive shortly right let's go attack the raspberries i need some secateurs let's go You are so pretty, Millie. You are. <laughs> Okay, these are our autumn fruiting raspberries and I'm going, actually, I think I can hear mum coming with the wheelbarrow. Oh, yep, coming around the corner. Okay, so the two pallets that she's got on the wheelbarrow are two little half size ones and I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna use them because we're on the lookout for full size ones. Might have to go around to home base and see if they've got any spare, they normally do. But these are gonna be part of the new compost bin great move strategy. <laughs> You can see where we've got our compost bins currently. We've got two bins and then a leaf mould bin and then the ready compost bin. Well, all of that is going to shift along this front edge. So at the top end here, in front of the bay tree and the camellia, we're going to put six compost bins 
all made out of pallets just straight across here. So we're going to move the couple that we've got over there and then build three more on top. So they'll be all across there. And the space we're freeing up, which is going to be on that top corner, which is a really sunny, sunny spot, is going to be put over to a Jerusalem artichoke bed because our neighbour's got a massive patch of them and they're wonderful and she very kindly gives us some, but we would like to have our own. And that is a really good spot for them. So that is a plan we're going to try and put into action before spring. So I said these are autumn fruiting raspberries and that just basically means that they fruit a little bit later and their care is a lot easier than summer fruiting raspberries. Because they fruit later, they fruit on the same year's canes, which means that every autumn you just chop the whole lot down. You don't have to worry about which cane is from this year and which cane is from last year. You just chop the whole lot to the ground and they regrow the following spring and then they produce their fruit in the autumn just makes the whole process a lot easier uh but they are prickly and what did i say i said i needed gloves what have i not got no gloves That's better. Now I can be a bit quicker. <laughs> so these raspberries have actually only been in the ground two years and they started off really poorly. I thought they weren't going to make it, but they've been fantastic. They fruited really, really well this year, despite the not so great weather. And they've really spread, which means that I'm going to have to put a bit of thought in next year about how to tie them in because they kind of just went everywhere in this fruit cage. So I'm going to have to kind of neaten them up a bit. Like I was saying, these raspberry canes I'm going to be using to tie up my peas again this year. That works really, really well because the raspberry canes are quite flexible, but they're really strong and they hold the peas brilliantly. Now I've cut these down, I'm going to go and just layer them on top of the compost and let them lose their leaves and dry out. One of the things you don't want to do is if you're going to be using them as pea canes is just cut them fresh and stick them straight in the ground to grow your peas because if they're fresh canes, the likelihood is they'll just root straight into the ground and you'll get raspberries growing up through your peas. Not ideal. But once they have dried out, they last years. I'm still using raspberry canes from three years ago for my peas. So they're a really good resource. Don't just compost them. <laughs> they're useful. Oh, actually, there's one other thing. Mum's really upset. So um, Caroline, you will have heard me talk about Caroline, she's just a few plots up that way, um, bought mum some bulbs when, because um, mum was looking after her cats when she went away and she bought her some bulbs to say thank you, which were these ones, some tulips. And mum has very diligently last week planted them in pots, all nice, you know, so that we can have them up by the shed. And she left them on the side there and we've come back today and there's not a single one left. The squirrels have, just taken the whole lot so she's feeling particularly unhappy about that today Ooh. and two through the middle not a thing left not a thing left Straight out of the centre and then seven round the sides. Oh. And four inches down, which is no, nothing. Nothing left at all. Now they've dug them all, all up, lovely. 
very neat. <laughs> I would have been just a little better, better off just leaving them in the packet. Oh well, start again. <laughs> So normally after I've cut the raspberries down, I'd just pile a load of compost or manure on top. But I'm actually going to use the one year old leaf mold on them. If you watched the vlog, I can't remember whether it was last week or the week before, I was talking a lot about how leaf mold really helps improve the structure of the soil with the fiber that's in the leaves. And the area that the raspberries are planted in is really poor soil. It was shifted when I moved the fruit cage and it just doesn't have a lot of structure to it. So I'm gonna pile on a load of these kind of part rotted leaves. So they've only been rotting down for one year. I'll leave the other two bags to do their full two years. But yeah, I'm gonna put them on top of here and use that as the mulch. We've got quite a lot of current bushes to put in here. Unfortunately, I missed the autumn slot to plant them because we didn't have them in time. So they're gonna be going in in the spring and I'll be doing quite a lot of manuring and moving around and stuff in here later in the season. So. I will probably be putting manure on top of these leaves at some point, but for the time being, I'm going to go with the leaves. Because this area is sort of raised up a little bit, it tends to get a lot of wash off as well. So when it rains, the water kind of runs off the sides and it's just taking the nutrients with it. So I'm hoping that the leaf mold is also gonna help with that. Just protect the soil over the winter and give them a good start next year. Okay, well that's them all tucked away for the winter. I think that looks pretty good. I'm quite impressed with how well rotted down that is actually. But this is something that I've really got to improve on this year because um, that was all a bit last minute. I've got the proper ones in the back there. You see the two wires? But they all grew so far forward that I had to put this bit of string in. I need to sort that out. Other thing I need to get done in here is sort this grapevine out because it's grown fantastically. Uh, but yeah, I need to chop that back and give it a bit of a prune ready for spring loads of jobs to get done ready for spring but the wind is proper picking up now so i think it might be time that we're going to head off
good morning. We're doing seed sorting. I'm excited. These are my seed boxes. Uh, they are absolutely jam packed full, but I haven't really been through them in such a long time. In fact, I think it was probably spring when we last had a really good look in there and things have got really jumbled. And basically I know that I've put a lot of empty packets back in there to remind me of uh, what I want to grow next year. Didn't make any notes though, did I? No, so it's just like an absolute jumble. So I'm gonna take these downstairs and mum and I are gonna spend the morning just having a really good sort through. The bit that I'm most interested in kind of making sure that we've got the seed for is the aubergines, the chilies and the peppers because they're gonna be sown in January. So that is approaching at breakneck speed. <laughs> yes, two weeks till Christmas uh, yesterday. Wowzers. Right, okay, get these downstairs. Let's see what we got. Okay, we've made some progress on the peppers front. We have got masses and masses of sweet peppers, which is kind of a turnaround because we used to grow masses of chilies. So that's interesting. But the ones we're gonna go with are Corbacchi, Corbacchi, not sure how you say it. We're going for that one. We are doing Nardello. We're doing Frigatello, which I've talked to you about Frigatello before. It's an absolute favorite. We're also doing this one, which is a Japanese purple one. Apparently very, very sweet and delish. We've got black Zulu, which is the only bell pepper that we actually have, you know, like a fat kind of capsicum pepper. We are gonna do a green, an orange or yellow and a red one. Um, but the last couple of years, we've actually bought them as plants, you know, as plug plants. And I think we're gonna do the same again. So the black Zulu is the only one of them we're gonna grow from seed. And I've just got to make a note that I've got to order the uh, other bell peppers that we need. And then we've got sweet banana, which was one of the few peppers which was actually successful in the last year's miserable pepper season. And then we've got Turkish kill. So 
quite a selection on the sweet peppers front. Just talking about the peppers, I remembered I said I would show you where I'm keeping my peppers and chilies that I'm attempting to overwinter. And this is them here. So they're out in the conservatory. Uh, we've basically got one or maybe two of everything we grew last year. And we'll just see. Luckily this year I've actually managed to label them. So I should be able to identify what's worked and what hasn't, which is what I couldn't do last year. <laughs> Please excuse the big old 5.99 sign on here. Uh, I haven't worked out what to do with that pot, so I've just got this chap sat in it for the time being, but that will go out eventually. So yeah, this seems like it's gonna be a really good place for the peppers. It's warm, but not too warm. So fingers crossed, they'll be all right. Actually out here, I've also got the leftover shallots and the garlic. So this is what we grew last year. Shallots, num num. I've got to think of something to do with them. They're the small ones that are left over. And these were the tiny red barons that I'm going to turn into uh, pickled onions. I better get on with that as well, actually. I was going to have them for Christmas, but I'm a bit late for that. <laughs> chili front we always grow the orange habaneros they are uh, really pretty warm but they make the most exceptional hot chili powder they're really fantastic so the two kind of warmer ones we grow are the orange habanero and the hot lemon or it's also called lemon aji a j i uh, so they're both warm they're both really really good fresh they're really good dried and really good made into chili powder so we're going to be going big on those as we do every year and also we always grow the black jalapeno just because it's gorgeous and it tastes great so those three we're throwing in two other red ones that we did last year but like i say because it was such a terrible year for chilies for us they didn't really get a fair chance so we're doing them again which is anaheim and cayenne Actually, just as I'm rifling through these, I'm just remembering that I've actually got an envelope upstairs that's got about four or five other chilli varieties in it that were given to me. Oh, that's exciting. I'll have to go and find them. I will update you on them when I find the envelope. It'll probably be next week. Mm -mm -mm. That's exciting. And then I've got one that I'm looking for. So I want to grow some sort of bird's eye chilli. So uh, something Thai, that sort of type chilli, you know, quite small when it's red, quite hot, when it's green, not so hot. That's what I'm looking for, but I don't have any of them yet. So yeah, that is the chili and pepper front, kind of sorted. Okay, well seed sorting is basically a never ending task, but we've got all of these, which are empty packets out of the box. Uh, so I've got some that I need to rebuy and some that were just uh, things that we're not gonna do again. So I've been slowly updating the like spreadsheet thing that I've got with all the seeds that we're gonna do this year and what we're gonna grow this year. 
and once I've worked out how to, I will make it available to everybody uh, with a list of what we're growing. But right now I don't know how to do that. So, and it's not finished. We've just been through chilies, peppers, aubergines and tomatoes this morning. Narrowed the tomato varieties down to 21, which I mean is progress. Okay, so of the tomatoes that we've decided to go with, we've got Derby Stripe, which is a wonderful red and yellow stripy tomato. It's an heirloom variety and I've grown that about five years on the trot. Really love it. Also got Tigerella, which has got the same description, red and yellow stripies, but I don't know how they compare taste wise. So I'm gonna do both of them. I intended to do the comparison last year, but um, I, one of them didn't work and I had a bit of a labeling drama. So um, my scientific objectivity was completely uh, non-existent. <laughs> so I'm gonna do them again this year. I've also got Sundrop, which is a wonderful, uh, bright orange, really fantastic tomato. And that's actually the one that I've only just taken the plant down now. It's just carried on all that time. So definitely doing that one, great taste. I got Galena, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous tomato. Grew that for the first time last year. Outdoor Girl is the only kind of basic round red mid-sized tomato that I'm doing. Not last year, but the year before, I tried out Outdoor Girl, Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight. And Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight are two really sort of uh, standard favourites for homegrown tomatoes. And Outdoor Girl had as much flavour as about 20 of those put together. So I don't grow those anymore. I only grow Outdoor Girl in terms of the normal red ones. And I've got this, which I'm really excited about. So over on Instagram, I've been watching people grow this really, truly, truly black tomato. And this is it. So I'm gonna have a go at that this year. Very exciting. So that's all my sort of mid-sized tomatoes. In terms of the big fat chaps, I've got the Bulgarian mystery tomato that I grow every year, which is just a joy on earth. And I've got Vince, which is the one that grows like a yellow pepper. Black Russian, because I just love it. It's one of my favourite cooking tomatoes out there. What I don't have any of is the Japanese black trifelli seeds, so I need to get some more of that because I don't know why, but I just didn't save any tomato seed at all this year. I don't know what I was thinking, but there we go. Uh, and then I've got these three new ones, which is uh, Cherokee Purple, Ananas Noir and Black Crim. I think Black Crim is pretty similar to Black Russian, but we will see. So they're my big chaps. I've also got one called Wall Deck and obviously the Japanese Black Trifelli to go in there. Cherry Tomatoes, I'm not doing a huge selection. I'm doing all but one the same as last year. I'm doing Brad's Atomic Grape again because I thought that was the most fantastic flavoured little chap. You had to leave them on the plant for a really, really long time though. And it's difficult because they look ready really early, but they're not. You have to leave them until they're pretty much, they fall off the plant and then, wow, they're really fantastic. I'm doing Garnet, which is my favourite of the dark red cherry tomatoes best flavour I've found really in a cherry tomato. It's quite sharp, but it's also really sweet. So I'm doing that one. It's also unbelievably prolific. This is a little black cherry, but it's more sort of a pinky colour than the garnet. Grew that last year, thought it was really, really lovely. This is a new one for me, Green Doctor, which is a green cherry tomato, which is supposed to be quite tart, almost like a sort of um, tomatillo type flavour, which is lovely. And the other one I'm going to be getting is a Sun Gold. But Sun Gold is an F1 seed variety and I only need one plant of it anyway. So I'm not going to buy seed. I'm actually just going to buy the plant a bit like I am with the bell peppers. So that will be coming later on about, it probably show up about April time. And I'm also doing three plum tomatoes. Pink plum, grow that one every year. It's just such a pretty, pretty tomato. And when you're chopping them up into a salad or something, it's just, it's really very pretty. It is almost like a peach colour. It's lovely. Black icicle, not done before. Uh, looking forward to that. I can make a guess at what it looks like from the name. And I will also be doing a really standard one like Roma or something along those lines, but I don't have the seed for that yet. So that is basically the tomatoes we're growing this year, chaps. If you think I've got any glaring holes in my tomato strategy here, and that I really should be growing one that you think is to die for, 
do let me know <laughs> because I'm always open to more tomatoes. We also looked at the cucumbers. We've got five cucumber varieties. Cucumbers, we're doing too long, which is Socrates, which is the one I grow every year. It's my favourite. It's a little mini chap. They're really sweet, really delicious with not a great deal of seed inside. Absolutely love them. We're also going to be doing Masterpiece, which is kind of a much darker skinned, long, larger cucumber. So they're the two kind of long green ones. And we're also doing three round ones, green apple, crystal apple and lemon. I've grown crystal lemon before and it was absolutely prolific, but peeled and de-seeded. The flavour of it was amazing. So I'm quite looking forward to trying these ones. Green apple and crystal apple, I looked them up and one of them is really, really pale, almost like a whitish green. And one of them's really quite dark and blocky, almost like a sort of a cube shape. Uh, yeah, basically that's the cucumber situation for 2022. Racking up, racking up. Well, that little box that I've got that has got all like the little drawers in it. Um, I got that from Ikea about maybe 15 years ago, <laughs> a long time ago. And they don't sell them anymore, but they do sell a different sort of a similar sort of box. And I've been given some vouchers for Ikea um, absolutely ages ago and haven't been to Ikea. Going to Ikea is a bit of a mission. But I think we're going to go this afternoon. So I'm going to go and get some more drawers because I'm fed up of not having a like a correct drawer for sweet corn and celery and all that kind of thing. So uh, I guess it's lunchtime and then we'll head to head to Ikea. So Ikeaing is an absolute mission and we're buying a lot of stuff which isn't garden related so I'm not going to bore you with it but these are the boxes. They are pretty good. They're a lot narrower than the boxes I already have but I think that's going to fit the seed packets a lot better actually because in mine they kind of go too deep and then it's very difficult to find what you're looking for when you're just rifling through. So yeah I'm going to get three of these and we'll go from there. Okay. Maybe they can go on the back seat. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw my coat over them.
can't believe this week has just completely got away from me. It's Monday evening. I've got to get this uploaded, edit the video, and it goes out tomorrow. Like, I can't see what happened to the week. It's just whizzed past. Absolutely whizzed past. Anyway, it's better than it dragging, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose time flies and all that. Mm. So, tomorrow I'm going to be editing this video. Hopefully I'll be able to get it up in time. Because <laughs> it's not looking uh, promising right now. So now I've got those boxes. We've got full speed ahead. I'm going to be getting... So obviously we've sort of mainly sorted out the tomatoes and the peppers and the chilies. We also did the aubergines, um, but turns out I have only got long purple and black beauty. And there's two other varieties that I want. So uh, I haven't sorted them out yet, but we made some progress. We made some good progress. And now I've got those boxes. That's what I'm going to be spending my Wednesday doing is having a bit of a sort out and a rearrange. I know I've got that little box of other chili varieties in this room somewhere. So that is a mission for Wednesday and getting all those boxes sorted and getting everything labelled and everything into them, which is pretty exciting because I really like doing a bit of box arranging. <laughs> so that's going to be a really nice way to spend Wednesday. And I think we're going to get the tree next week, Christmas tree, which is exciting. Mum absolutely hates, well, it's not so much she hates Christmas, but the whole thing around Christmas she really doesn't like it. She doesn't want to get a tree any year. I have to really fight for, to get a tree. Um, she doesn't like Christmas decorations and she doesn't like any of that kind of thing. So I've got my armour ready for the battle that is to ensue because I like Christmas decorations and fairy lights and things like that. Don't need fairy lights all year round, but at Christmas, come on. Yeah. So I've got that fight on my hands next week as well as seed sorting. Um, okay, so the spreadsheet that I've got where I've got all my varieties for this year I tried last year to make it freely available for anybody to um, to download or whatever or look at online and it didn't work. Um, I made I somehow made it editable by everybody because then the people that I shared it with edited my seed list to make it theirs. So it got incredibly confusing. <laughs> so I'm going to um, look into that and make my version like available on the website probably. Uh, or just a link underneath, I'm not sure, but I will work that out just in case anybody is interested in sort of what we're planning to grow for the year. The section of seeds that I'm really going to have to put a lot of time and effort into kind of sorting through are the brassicas because I've got masses and masses of them and we kind of get to a situation where I don't know if you ever find this where you've got so many different varieties of things growing that you don't have enough space to put a lot of any one thing in. And you end up with just kind of bits of stuff, like not enough really on a regular basis to have a big meal with it. It's just like fits and starts and bits and pieces. Like it's all a bit bitty. And that's sort of what the brassicas feel a little bit like this year. We got really good with the um, Cavalier Nero because first it's indestructible and also it's really reliable. So no problems with that and uh, the perennial stuff is looking really strong the nine stars looking amazing and the asturian cabbages are still going strong but like the little smaller bits the curly kale i only ended up with two plants of that you know i had that sort of disaster where loads of them died off because we had the cold spring and half of them were eaten by slugs and when i repotted them the labels didn't transfer <laughs> i say didn't transfer like it wasn't my fault i didn't transfer the labels in an adequate way also i was just lining up the pots with like one of them labeled and then when somebody else <laughs> uh transfers them into another tray or something she shuffles them all around that system no longer works anymore so we've got loads and loads of bits and pieces and scraps and starts of brassicas and next year i'm going to really kind of consolidate what we want out of the brassica beds yeah that's going to be a bit of a mission so i'm going to start that when i transfer into the new boxes which i'm pretty excited about but on that note, uh, after this weird week where uh, not a lot happened, but it seemed to go really, really quickly, I'm going to say cheers, chaps. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you and that the weather's good. Doesn't look too bad here. Clear skies, at least. I'll see you next week, chaps. Bye.